Jesus emphasized several key facts about Satan. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. Satan is a figure shrouded in darkness and deceit, embodying the quintessence of falsehood. His essence is woven with lies, crafting illusions that lead countless souls astray. Satan's deceptive nature is unequivocally portrayed in the Bible, revealing a consistent pattern of manipulation and falsehood. Satan's identity as a liar is profoundly articulated by Jesus in the Gospel of John. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. When he lies, he speaks his native language, demonstrating his fundamental character. Satan's capacity for falsehood extends to entire nations and the collective human consciousness. In the book of Revelation, Satan's domain of deception encompasses the whole earth, illustrating his role as a cosmic deceiver, leading not only individuals but entire communities and nations away from truth. Satan's role in the spiritual warfare that pervades the biblical narrative is highlighted through his interactions with figures of authority and prophecy. In the book of Job, Satan emerges as the accuser casting doubt and aspersions on Job's integrity, suggesting that Job's faith is merely a byproduct of divine protection and prosperity. Satan's designation as the father of lies encapsulates his relentless pursuit to undermine truth through deception, distortion and denial. His methods range from direct falsehoods to sophisticated distortions that mimic the truth. In the Gospel of Matthew 13, 24, 3 and 36, 39, Jesus vividly illustrates Satan's insidious role as the enemy and the evil one. The parable of the weeds is a powerful allegory that illustrates the kingdom of heaven as a farmer who grows high-quality seeds in his field under darkness. However, a malevolent adversary stealthily infiltrates the field, sowing weeds among the wheat and vanishing into the night. The farmer's workers suggest removing the weeds, but the farmer warns against it, fearing it might uproot the wheat. The good seed symbolizes the people of the kingdom, while the weeds represent the followers of the evil one. The harvest signifies the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels appointed to execute divine judgment and separation. Satan, the absolute antagonist to all that is holy and good, is known for his relentless mission to undermine God's work and lead humanity astray. The first epistle of John further illuminates this, stating that we know we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. In the somber discourse preceding Jesus' imminent crucifixion, he declares a moment of profound judgment upon the earth, revealing that the prince of this world will be driven out. This act of crucifixion was not just a tragic miscarriage of justice, but also the ultimate betrayal of divine love by nailing the Savior to the cross. Satan's ultimate punishment remains pending, but Jesus' death serves as a devastating blow to Satan and his demonic forces. As the shadow of betrayal loomed in his earthly ministry, Jesus remained unassailable, stating that the prince of this world had no hold over him. This statement resonated with absolute authority and calm assurance as Satan could not control the earth's spiritual warfare. Satan's dominion extends over a world filled with false religious systems and ideologies designed to counteract God's truth. This world is saturated with philosophies, educational systems and commercial enterprises that reflect his corrupt nature. Satan's pervasive control over worldly ideologies is evident in the widespread acceptance of doctrines that oppose divine law. The sinful condition of humanity driven by base desires and impulses is a direct reflection of Satan's rule. Believers are called to transcend this worldliness and adhere to God's eternal commands. The love of the world and its desires, passions of the flesh, lust of the eyes and pride of life are fundamentally incompatible with the love of the Father. While the world and its desires pass away, those who do the will of God abide forever shielded from the evil one by the protective grace of the one born of God. The transformation of Peter, originally a fisherman, is one of the greatest redemption stories ever written. Jesus himself warns Peter of an imminent trial that would shake the very foundations of his faith. Satan has asked to sift all of them as wheat, revealing a sinister intent to shake Peter's faith so vigorously that he would fall. This collective danger is evoked in various translations, including the Berean Study Bible. Satan's intent in sifting Peter and the disciples was to undermine and obliterate their faith. This narrative shifts our perception of the adversary, known biblically as Satan, as he can initiate nothing without divine consent. Jesus counted this sinister plot with divine intercession. The story of Peter, Simon and his disciples is a testament to the complex yet victorious journey of faith that all believers are called to navigate.
Jesus' intercession assures Peter's faith that it will not fail. Even when faced with trials, these trials are an expected part of the Christian journey, as the apostles affirmed in Acts 14 verse 22. They are not just obstacles, but opportunities for spiritual growth and strengthening, as detailed in Romans 8 28. Peter himself reflects on this in his epistle, urging believers to rejoice amidst various trials, recognizing that the testing of their faith produces perseverance leading to spiritual maturity and completeness. The narrative of trial intercession and triumph illustrates the divine strategy where even the darkest trials are used by God to refine and fortify his people, preparing them for greater works and ultimately for the glory revealed in Jesus Christ. Jesus stands beside us, offering strength and intercession and the ultimate sovereignty of God over all spiritual adversities. Peter's recovery and support for his fellow disciples illustrates another divine purpose for our challenges, teaching us to aid others in their spiritual journey. True faith and perseverance are marked not by flawless performance, but by repentance and restoration each time we stumble and rise. We are fortified by Jesus Christ's prayers for our steady fastness, and failures are not endpoints but gateways to new beginnings fortified by Christ's strength despite Satan's intentions for Peter's faith to crumble. In conclusion, our perceived vulnerabilities when exploited by Satan need not lead to despair, but can prompt a spiritual cleansing, allowing us to relinquish pride and embrace the Holy Spirit's courage. Trusting in God not only shields us from spiritual onslaughts, but also secures a life enriched by His grace. God's omnipotence surpasses Satan's malevolence, and trusting in Him ensures that our faith will not only endure but flourish. God's strength far outweighs any force, including Satan's before Peter's denials. Jesus had already interceded on his behalf, anticipating his weaknesses and advocating for his restoration. This dual assurance of hope and protection ensures that we are never defenseless against adversarial forces. God guarantees that our faith will not only endure, but flourish through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are reborn into a vibrant hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, an inheritance that cannot perish or fade. As we navigate our spiritual journey, the experiences and testimonies of others like Peter serve as lessons, beacons of grace and resilience. When Satan attempts to sift us as wheat, remember that Jesus Christ is our steady advocate, always interceding on our behalf. His prayers are affirmations of strength, ensuring that our faith will not falter. In conclusion, Challenges may seem insurmountable obstacles, but they are opportunities to grow stronger in our faith and more resilient in our spirit. By standing in the might of Jesus, we can overcome trials and maintain our faith.